Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Delia624 here. Today we're going to talk about my 2022 Mazda 3 Sport. It is the middle trim, which is the GS, and it's a luxury package, which comes with sunroof and leatherette seats. I thought I'd do a little video because it's been 100,000 kilometers of owning this car in the past two years. We've got it cleaned, oil change done. So, basic key, you know, it's got the lock, unlock, panic button. I just have this key cover, which shows the extra stuff. Now we enter and we can start the car. There it is, shows a little animation and it has the most obnoxious seatbelt sound ever. And, uh, Something else I've also added to the car is the 10.25 inch screen or whatever from the Mazda CX-5. I bought it on eBay, got a super good deal on it. Highly recommended, I really like it. I also bought the navigation SD card. So useful when there's no service and whatnot, when the phone, you know, fails to work. Good camera angle. As you can see, the black leatherette, which comes with the luxury trim, the sunroof, not huge but it's not bad and then you know it comes with a glossy center console which i covered up with a you know wrap and stuff other than that there's nothing too crazy in here um yeah you can see the matte wrap i put on it because it gets scratched so easily and it looks so ugly you can see that uh, another thing that comes with the luxury trim is the power seats the adjustable power seats, the tilt down mirrors when you go into reverse, so I'll just shift into reverse. And then you can see it tilts down by itself. And go back into drive, it'll go back to normal. And it has the auto dimming center rear view mirror. And again, the sunroof, so pretty. So coming outside real quick, you can tell we just have the one single ring on the lower trim, if you get the top trim, you'll get the outer, the inner ring as well. And then same with the front. You got the headlights, the non-signature headlights. Another thing is I sold my old tires and got the Nokian WGR4s all weathers. Good tires so far, very smooth. All right, next thing to point out, a few of the issues I've had is the window door sill. You can tell it's actually doing it again a tiny bit. But they come apart and it ends up scratching and damages this right there. It damages that piece. That's from the door closing a lot. So just keep an eye out for that. A warranty typically covers it. Another warranty thing I've had done is the battery because the battery randomly died on me. I came back from a two week trip, you know, car was sitting all normally and the battery was completely dead. Like no signs of life. So we got that sorted, which is great. Other than that, driven 100,000 kilometers in two years. Haven't encountered really anything too significant. You know, obviously knocking on wood. <laughs> but yeah. I also heard that there were issues with the air conditioning, which I haven't encountered so far, but I understand if it's really hot one day, I might have might encounter that and then I'll have to talk to Mazda, but this dealership here in Chilliwack's been great. What else is there to talk about? Rain sensing wipers, they're good. You know, they sense the rain most of the time. You can just adjust the speed if it's not sensing it. Um, other stuff comes to like the, uh, radar cruise control. It's great, but it is a little bit touchy or reacts suddenly sometimes. So, Let's say a car pulls in front of you. The car's not gonna be smooth about it. It'll sometimes slam on the brakes. 
or if there's a car that leaves in front of you when you're cruising on the highway, you know, going a slower speed or whatever, then sometimes it floors it, other times it doesn't, so it doesn't make sense. I like it when it accelerates slower, so it's, you know, nice and smooth and gets to speed, whatever. Uh, yeah, but it works great in stop and go traffic, so, you know, I set my distance to like two or three just so it gives the computer time to stop and, you know, always pay attention. It doesn't have the auto steering because it's not the top trim. Like I've said many times before, other than that, you know, you get two USB-A ports in the center console here. Not too much fancy stuff. The uh, 12 volt plug is battery always on. So be careful with that because that could kill your battery. The back seat room, you know, there's not too much room, but it does the job. But if you have someone that's like six feet, you know, it's not too comfortable, especially with the headroom. You kind of like sitting there like, oh, anyways. Yeah, this car has been great to drive. It's very comfortable. You know, I do six hour straight drives all the time and I can keep going the whole way. The car runs nice and smoothly. It's relatively efficient. I was getting on average probably like 6.5 liters per 100K with my previous tires, you know, the basic ones. But now I'm getting about seven with these because there's so much more tread. You get heated steering wheel, Canada only, on the middle trim, I think base trim doesn't get it, but you get heated seat standard base trim with the GX in Canada because, you know, it's cold. No ventilated seats, sadly, in the Mazda 3s. They only do that in the SUVs. Yeah, I don't know. I like this car. I'll keep driving it for a while, but if I were to replace this one day, then I would replace it with the Mazda CX-50. I heard they're bringing out a hybrid version for the 2025 model year, which will be exciting, except the hybrid engine I heard is underpowered because it's just using a standard RAV4 engine, which, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the RAV4 system and the CVT, I much prefer the transmission, but bring the European Skyactiv-X engine to Canada. That would be amazing, whatever. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon.